so now that I've kind of finished watching through season 12 of Doctor Who from 1974 to 1975, it's time to rank the stories. And while I admit I haven't seen people rank this one particularly highly, I have seen it is a personal favourite of several people, and you know what, I can definitely see why. I mean, this is possibly the most iconic version of the Doctor, and this was his first season. So I do get why people would consider this one a favourite. But, anyway, we're not here to glorify the fourth Doctor. Well, we sort of are, but you know what. This is my ranking of season 12 of Doctor Who from 1974 to 1975. All five stories. Starting down at the bottom, we've got the Sontaran Experiment. Now, I don't necessarily... Just to be clear, I don't think any of these stories are, are actually bad. I mean, putting them down at the bottom is just a matter really of personal taste. And with my personal taste, Sontar and Experiment comes down at the bottom. Once again, it's not necessarily a bad story, it's just very much filler because uh, this was originally part of the Ark in Space story, but then things got shuffled around and this was pretty much, we need to have a story on Earth, let's roll the dice, ah, Sontarans. So, once again, I mean, it's nice that they filmed the entire thing out on the moors, and it is nice to see the Sontaran back, even if it is just one with Steyr. But compared to everything else in Season 12, this is the weakest. And I'd probably rank it about 5 out of 10. Moving up one spot, we got Revenge of the Cybermen. Now, once again, I don't think any of the stories in Season 12 are actually bad, but Sometime an Experiment and Revenge of the Cybermen are both down at the bottom as slightly weaker than the rest. While, while this is person my personal favourite design of the classic era Cybermen, kind of overall, I I will admit this was just an excuse to get back to Nerva Beacon and once again roll the dice. Oh, we got Cybermen. This was apparently the one and only time that Tom Baker actually did face off against the Cybermen, which is kind of cool. And I admit I do love the design, but aside from that, it's very much by the numbers. You need something to end off the season. Off we go. So, as I said, not terrible, but just Sontaran Experiment and Revenge of the Cybermen are both down low. Revenge of the Cybermen, just a little bit more forward. I place it about 7 out of 10. But the rest, I feel, are all great stories. Anyway, moving up one spot, we got Robot. Tom Baker's first story as the Doctor, and he made a go of it. He definitely got off on the right foot. He set off running, and he made the stripy scarf iconic. <laughs> I mean, as, as with uh, two stories, it's not necessarily perfect. I mean, there are a few small moments, such as uh, the kind of effects used with the K1 robots, which there are some points where it's obviously an action figure kind of brought close to the camera or enlarged. It's quite obviously fake. But at the same time, Tom Baker's Doctor is just so much fun. I mean, his wardrobe scene where he's going through everything from... Vikings to Harlequin Jesters to Jokers. I I love that scene. It's one of my personal favourites. And it is nice to see an, a unit story kind of fully work with the Doctor. So, yeah. While I admit Robot isn't entirely perfect, it comes at my number three spot here. And I rank it about an 8 out of 10. But still pretty good. Moving up one spot, we've got The Ark in Space. I've ranked this about a 9 out of 10, but while I while I stated in my review of it, which I may leave a link to down below, uh, the effects in the arc in space are a little hit and miss. I mean, there are some points where it's just clearly just a sleeping bag wrapped in green bubble wrap, which is kind of a little humorous for how you know, cheap the effects were. But at the same time, with the space... With the space station and with the Wirren, they do manage to provide a legitimate sense of tension. I mean, even when the Doctor is insulting Sarah Jane in order to get her through the vents, the sense of tension is still particularly high, and I do admire it for that. This was a story that had to do quite a lot in a very in enclosed space, and they managed to make something that legitimately feels great. I mean, I have seen that this is actually considered one of the best of the classic Doctor Who period, and you know what, I can definitely understand why. So the Ark in Space comes at my number 2, and I give it about a 9 out of 10. But my number 1 spot in ranking season 12 of Doctor Who is Genesis of the Daleks. I mean, 
How could it be anything else? This was the first appearance of Davros in Doctor Who. This was when we saw the beginning of everything and it posed one very simple question. A question that I think Whovians are still asking themselves today. I, if someone pointed a child out to you in a crowd, someone who knew the future pointed out a child to you in a crowd and told you that child would grow up totally evil, it would, to be a monstrous dictator who would go on to enslave and kill millions of innocent people, could you then kill that child? And it, fans are still debating that to this day. People fans are still saying, well, if it would save the universe, yeah. Or some people go, but would you step that far? It's a question we're still asking, and that's what makes Genesis of the Dalek, Daleks brilliant. Once again, there are some very enclosed spaces, there are some parts that are clearly low effect, but Genesis of the Daleks is still the best of season 12. Anyway, that's my that's my ranking of season 12 from 1974 to 1975. Hopefully I will be able to get a new complete season of Classic Who at some point, but there's my little ranking of it. Hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, go and check season 12 out for yourself. If you haven't seen any of these stories, you're missing out. Some great stuff. Anyway, until next time, see ya.